Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. We would like to thank Mr. Lou Paris and all you folks in the audience for having us today. It's a very good learning experience for us. We've never done anything like this, and now we're going to give it a, give it a go. So if you'll bear with us. My name is William Cooper. I am the inventor of Child and Pet Safe. This is one of my three younger brothers, Brandon Cooper. He is the COO of Child and Pet Safe. Um, I invented this idea a little more than two years ago when I was uh, sitting at home and I'd seen on the news that yet another child had passed away that was left for, uh, uh, on accident or for whatever reason in the vehicle when it was, and they had a heat stroke and died. And so I ran to my room and grabbed an ink pen and some paper to try to figure out a, a way to help prevent this from happening, this ongoing trend that you hear about more and more on the news here, here as of late. Um, so a couple of my ideas I had were to maybe a keychain or uh, something, some kind of mechanism you can hook to your vehicle horn. So when you stop to get out to go shopping or whatnot, you can, uh, an alarm will go off to remind you that your child's in the car. Um, so, and then all of a sudden I thought, well, wait a minute, there's an app for everything. So why couldn't there be an app to help save these children's lives, these innocent babies who cannot open the door themselves? The pet cannot open the door themselves. They're expecting us adults to protect their precious, priceless lives. And so I took it upon myself to try to do the best I could. I grew up in the country living on the land, you know, came from a basically poor family, never done anything like this before. So I took the initiative to call an app developing company called Zapparoo. And uh, they presented it to their design and development team. And within two days, I was getting numerous emails, phone calls, and it usually takes two or three weeks for them to respond back to you. They were based in Atlanta, Georgia, and also down in Miami, Florida. Uh, at one time, I was working with 20-something, 20 22 or 23 different individuals from Zafiru putting this uh, app together. Uh, we had something called Base Camp where we could communicate back and forth with each other to get all the, the app, graphic art design and all the work done to the app. They told me to make the app look like without any words, what it would be uh, representing. So I said, I want the car to have a child and a pet in it. At first, this was gonna be called child safe, but my girlfriend made the comment, well, our dog is our child. And think about all the people that leave their dog in the car while they go shopping. You know, so those are our, those are our family, those are our family members, children, pets. So, um, so the design and development team at Zapru, they really loved the concept and they started working on it immediately with me. Um, and uh, so like I said, it was gonna be called Child Safe and then I decided to in incorporate our animal, our pet, Roscoe, that's the, uh, the mascot in the app, my, my boy Roscoe. He's a, a beagle walker hound. He likes to bark quite a bit. Um, but at any rate, uh, so we started working on this and it took a long time to come up with the, the proceeds to get all the work done through the app development company. A lot of months of uh, you know ongoing agony, trying to come up with the money, the time to do all this. And um, so, so I, I, I wanted the, the picture to be a car with a child and a pet in it. And uh, I thought, well, okay, children in Florida are dying from heat stroke. But what if it's the middle of the winter, like up in North Dakota, say for instance, and there's a blizzard, they could die from uh, hypothermia, you know, being frozen in a car or whatnot. So that's why you see snowflakes on one side and the hot sun beaming down on the roof of the car that's fading because the heat's pounding down on the car. There's a child and pet in there. And so, uh, you know, we've been working on this for a couple of years now, and uh, it's all ready to go. We're trying to get it on iOS and Android, and we need help uh, raising public awareness. We've worked with the Florida Senator, Dorothy Hoogle, here in uh, Port Orange. I sent her an email because she had posted a, um, a news story in the Daytona Beach News Journal, and she was trying to pass a new bill to law that allows people to bust out a car window in the event that they see a child or pet in distress. And the, if you did that, you could not get in trouble because you're helping save those lives of a child or pet. So Dorothy Hoople told her associate to get all of me, get her in her office immediately. 
I sent an email to her when I seen the ad in the paper. They went in there and they said they could help me do branch off of this uh, to unknown destinations or points if we could just turn it into an app because it was a wonderful idea. And uh, we spoke with the New Smyrna Beach Fire Department. They uh, put a monthly newsletter in their monthly newsletters for us with a flyer that we created to help make it public awareness. But we haven't got enough of that. We haven't got enough public awareness out there. We're, we're new at this and we're trying our best. I've spoke with the uh, president of the Rotary Club in New Smyrna Beach, had an hour and a half meeting with him. He's an entrepreneur and a successful businessman. And on top of that, he is the president of the Rotary Club of New Smyrna Beach. Uh, so with that being said, I'd like to hand this over to my brother Raymond. He is the tech guy. Uh, He's my younger brother, and he wanted to, with, during his years in school, they were teaching more about computers and whatnot than when I was in school. We had an ink pen and a piece of paper. <laughs> so thank you very much. This is my brother, Raymond Cooper, the CEO of Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as uh, my brother said, we are looking for uh, awareness for this problem because it is a, a serious issue. Um, it's not just here in Florida, it's a bit of everywhere, really. Um, it's sad to think that it has to come to people needing an app to remember something like their kid in the backseat. But it does happen, accidents happen, people get busy. Um, what, we, what we're looking for is a simple solution to an all too common series of tragedies. And um, it takes more than you would think, apparently. Um, but the awareness issue is what we're looking for. These are the number of heat stroke deaths since, I'll get out of your light, 1998. Um, and it's disheartening to think that this many happen and you only see it on the news two, maybe three stories in a year. And there are far more than that. Um, this isn't just a local thing either, this is international. Um, last year in Australia, there were 1,531 kids locked in hot cars that the paramedics had to show up to. Between 2007 and 9, there were 26 in France and Belgium and 7 of those were fatal instances. Um, But they're not just limited to parents. This can literally happen to any <coughs> Two canine officers this year that have been reported were left found dead in their officer's vehicle. Um, if, the if this can happen to the police with their service animals, this can happen to a parent with their child. And how can we prevent it from occurring though? There are, there were a couple of apps that have been developed apart from ours that are no longer around, um, as well as, and you've probably heard this in the news, uh, specialty car seats. The problem with the car seats is that they require frequent battery changes. Batteries in a hot car can, and usually will if you've ever had this happen to you, um, they will burst, battery acid goes all over the place, then you've got a malfunction baby seat. Uh, the two apps that, that had come out, um, the ones that I had seen at least, required that you purchase um, a six inch long apparatus that plugs into your auxiliary plug. And I don't know about any of you, but in my car, the auxiliary plug is right in front of the gear shift. Who is going to keep that there? Most people are going to, that's another item by the way that would require you to keep the battery in. Um, and if a parent is forgetting their child, who's going to remember to change the batteries all the time? Um, we do have a short video that I'll show you in a moment. Um, but, you know, this is a situation that's becoming an epidemic. Um, you know, 30 or more kids are dying every year since 1998. 
So this isn't just something that's, you know, one forgetful parent every now and again. This is something that is a serious issue that we felt we needed to help solve. Um, the video I'm about to show you is um, a video we had made by Zapru, our development company. And it gives you a better idea of uh, how the app is going to work. And we'll talk more about that as we go on. As you saw in the video, um, you'll be able to put in your child or pet's name into the app. You will uh, put in a destination. It's all based on your GPS and your phone. So you put in a destination, where you're going, where you're leaving from. And as you travel, uh, you will get alerts asking, is Johnny, Billy, are they in the car still? And you will have to signal yes or no. If you are going more than what was it? One, one mile. more than ten miles an hour, the alarm kicks on. If, so if you're stopped at a, at a red light, you know you can take care of the alarm. When you get to the destination, it's going to ask you, "Have you gotten your child?" And it's going to mention them by name. Um, you signal yes or no. If you don't signal yes or no, the app will then alert the next parent who also has the app on their phone to let them know, hey, the child's in the car, the alarm has not been answered, uh, do you, are you aware that your kid is in the car? And from there, um, it can go to any number of phones. So, you know, your uncles, grandparents. Uh, we were talking about last night, um, the app could potentially be used as well for senior citizens in nursing homes. There have been cases of senior citizens in nursing homes that have been left in the bus and have passed away. So, you know, it's it's something that can happen when you get into the, uh, the motion of the day and you just, you know, you're on autopilot, maybe you don't forget, or you don't remember, I should say, that your child is in the car, or your grandmother is on the bus, or whatever. But, you know, this is a, a serious issue, and um, we decided that we needed to put a stop to it. So, um, I'm going to pass this back to my brother. He has something else. Thank you. I'm sorry to take so much time, but this is, I want to stress some critical points here. Uh, this app, when your car gets going 10 miles per hour, once it's downloaded on your phone, either iOS or Android, once your car reaches 10 miles per hour, the app will kick on. It'll ask you, is your child or a pet in the car? You can either hit yes or no. That's how we first had it developed, you know, the, the, the work we're going to do on it. But you're not allowed to text and drive. So we're going to have this all voice activated when we do the computer programming. And then you can just say yes or no. And, uh, and uh, like my brother Ryan was saying, this could happen to anyone. Uh, here within the last week or two, there was a, a firefighter down in South Florida somewhere. I can't remember the name of the county or city, but he was taking his uh, three or four year old daughter to school and he had a 23 month old baby in the back of his truck and he was going for firefighter training or some kind of uh, 
you know, test to do. And uh, we're talking about a firefighter, folks, the ones that are supposed to help save these lives, right? And he got he got to drop off his little daughter in school, continued on in his vehicle to the training course he was supposed to do for firefighters, and forgot his 23-month-old baby boy in the back of his truck. Eight hours later, he went out to discover that the baby was dead. And we're talking a firefighter. Uh, Marion County a while back had uh, 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 the um, Humane Society. They were going to go to Pet Safe. I mean, I'm sorry, Pet uh, Pet Smart, one of those pet companies, and uh, to, to adopt out the pet. And there were two ladies working at the Humane Society that day. The one lady put the pet that was going to be up for adoption in the van in a little cage, and then there was another lady that took another dog without the other ladies uh, aware of this, and she put it in another cage in the back of the van. Well, the little dog was scared, so he got out of the cage somehow, it wasn't locked properly or whatever, and went and hid under the van seat. So the lady driving the van went to the Petco, PetSmart, and got out, did the adoption thing. No one adopted the dog, so she put it back in the van. In the meantime, the other dog was still hidden under the seat, all scared. So they got back to the, the Humane Society and the lady thought, okay, I just have this one dog in my van, took the dog out. And the next day they found the, the, the second dog in the van dead uh, because they, didn't, they were unaware, they didn't notify each other that there were two dogs that day in the van. Now, had they have had this app, it's another, for instance, uh, so to speak, that uh, they could have been reminded of, you know, looking in your van, you know, look around better, take a better look. You know, just simply look at them. They have keys these days where you, you don't even have to look back when you lock your door. You get out of the car and you're on your way to, to Walmart, you just do like that over your shoulder with the key chain that you have your ignition key on and you lock the doors without even looking back. You can forget your child. Um, you know, K, 19 K9 dogs last year died in the police department around the country. Um, 19 K9 police dogs died of uh, heat stroke. Would you like to add something? <laughs> um, we have been in talks with companies such as OnStar to try to implement something similar to this through our app with them as well. So that the phone app, if you don't answer the alert in so many attempts, that it notifies OnStar and the police are sent to the car. So this isn't something that is just, you know, if the parents can't forget, can't remember to bring their child, how are they going to remember to set this app? That's not that sort of a situation. Um, if we can get, and like I said, we've been in talks with OnStar. We've been in talks with several um, pet companies and um, child item companies, clothing lines and uh, safety seats and that kind of thing. So, you know, it's just a matter at this point of getting it onto iOS or Android and making it known because the awareness is the first issue with us right now. Um, it's the main issue. We really don't have any other hurdles to jump at this point. You know, it's, it's to the point where one little nudge is going to push this thing so that it takes off. So. Um, the sooner that happens, the more lives we can save. And if we save just one, we've done our business. You know, that's, this isn't something where we set out to cure the problem 150%. You know, there's always going to be forgetful parents, uh, people that, you know, just accidents happen. But, you know, if we save just one life, we've done what we need to do. So, thank you. I'd like to just add one more quick thing, if you didn't mind, Mr. Paris. Uh, well, there's a couple things here, and I'll make it as brief as possible. Uh, the NHTSA is the National Highway Transportation and Safety Administration, and it just so happens to be Mr. Lou Paris here has brought us up on stage on this given day, which is the 21st of September, as you know, which happens to be Child Passenger Safety Week. So what a great time to present this idea. Thank you, Mr. Paris. Thank you very much. Also, um, there was a there was an incident in Georgia a couple of months ago. The, the young fellow left his two twins in the vehicle, and it turns out, according to the news media, he had been drinking and was passed out drunk, 
did not know his children were still in the car. I think they were two years old. They were twin daughters. And so and some people at work where I work told me, well, he would have never heard the alarm on the app go off because he was, you know, intoxicated and passed out. Well, that's why I did my homework when I made this app. See, for two years I've been working on this and I tried to find every little loophole, you know, every little solution to it that I could to find in here. Had he had this app downloaded, if it was out on the market, then the grandparent or a sister or a brother, uncle, relative, cousin, friend, babysitter, someone else after, if, if the app goes off two times and there's no response, the third alarm that goes off, if no one responds by the third time, another alarm will be sent on the third try to the grandmother, the grandfather, uncle, aunt, cousin. And there's a good chance that the grandmother would have received an alert on her phone and she'd have said, oh my goodness, my son didn't answer the response within the second alarm going off. Something must be wrong. I need to rush over to his house and see what the problem might be, okay? And then this could have very well saved those two little innocent two-year-old twin daughters. You know, these, not one child should have to die. And I'm really uh, putting my foot down because I'm really kind of getting heartbroken about seeing it all the time, more and more on the news. And so any, anybody in here can tell your family, your friends, relatives uh, about us, and maybe uh, check out our website, you know, pass the word around. Um, Oh, we have we are on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, in fact, from where we come from as a poor family, it was pretty, really cool that uh, Warren Buffett liked and followed Child and Pet Safe on Twitter. As soon as I put it up there, Warren Buffett, which is one of the richest guys in America, I just wanted to add that. So here's Mr. Lou Paris again. Thank you, folks, for showing up today. I hope we did okay. God bless you guys.